Welcome to the Work, Wealth, and Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole, and this podcast is your guide to start creating a lifestyle by design. From entrepreneurship, money and finance, taxes and residencies, and everything in between, this show highlights the nuances of a true global citizen lifestyle. Let's dive in. Brent, welcome to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Very much so looking forward to our conversation. Before we get into it, a little bit about your story, your background, and introduction as to you. So you are an investor and a coach with a focus on buying and selling vacant land. As an army officer for over eight years of service, you spent a great deal of time away from your family, and then you knew that you needed to make some changes in order to be more present for your wife and your children. In a short period of time, you were able to expand your business, hire a team, and most importantly, spend quality time with your family while still working hard and helping others. You invest in many different types of real estate, and your favorite investment strategy deals with buying and selling vacant land. So we're going to dive into the vacant land aspect of real estate today, which I'm very excited about. I have had some others diving into real estate syndications on the show in the past, but Brent, tell us a little bit about your story, your journey into this business venture and what that has looked like for you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Nicole. And what's awesome is you're sitting in Mexico. I am a travel junkie myself. My wife is amazing at uh, planning the travel. And we're actually buying a uh, Class A RV today as we speak to go travel more of the United States. Um, We just got back from the Cayman Islands and then Costa Rica. So we're bouncing all over the place. Um, But I, I would say just a little bit about my background is, you know, I was in the military. I was always away from home. Um, and just, I was, I was constantly away, you know, I, my, the first year, my first son's life, I probably only got to see him like a couple months out of his first year of his whole life. So, and that was kind of getting daunting on me, you know, as we had a second baby and I was preparing for a third combat deployment and I was just like, I've got to find a way out of it. So I started, I heard, I heard a guy on a podcast talking about flipping vacant land And he was talking about doubling and tripling and quadrupling his money like overnight. And I had bought rentals over the years and I I bought into that dream like, okay, I'm going to live off this passive income one day. I had multiple rental houses at that time. And all I'll tell you about those rentals is they were keeping me down. Like I was always spending money and fixing things and replacing stoves and furnaces and air conditioners and roof leaks. And it's like all my extra salary I had in the military was going towards the rental properties. I was like, I'm not even living in these properties and they're not even nice. So it's just, that was kind of not, definitely not working for me. But when that, when that guy on the podcast talked about doubling and tripling his money, I was like, there's gotta be something to this. So I immediately took action that night and started mailing landowners, specific landowners that were behind on their taxes they were out of state. And now that's a very small list. You can, you can do some deals doing that list, but I never went, went and looked at any of those parcels of land because I was too busy in my army job, but I would post them on like Facebook and Craigslist and double and triple and quadruple my money overnight. So I just kept doing it and stumbling forward and making a bunch of mistakes. And before I knew it <laughs> in like nine, well, no, it's about 18 months time frame. I was making $9,800 a month in land payments. I was, I was like, okay, we can definitely get out of the military now because this is double what I make in the military. Uh, so I got out, I put in my resignation, it took about a year and a half to completely get out. And now it's like, we do this from wherever we want to. I work from home, you know, I built up a big team and then I kind of compressed that team. Cause I was like, this is not what I want. I, I got into this for time freedom and financial freedom and, and geography freedom. So we've just kind of been, you know, row, row, rowing our boats, you know, gently down the stream since about, you know, 2018, I haven't had a real job. I love that. We're all about not having real jobs here. Okay. So dive, I I want you to really dive into the specifics of what the process actually looks like from beginning Mm -hmm. to acquiring the land. And then what's the next step after that? Yeah, let's give your audience uh, how they can do a land deal today. So the first thing I do is I go in and I only buy in the United States. 
Uh, you can buy, you can be in Canada buying, like it doesn't matter where you're at. I was looking at land deals in Costa Rica. I was like, I don't know this area. I'm just going to stick to what I know. Um, I'm not going to get too big for my britches like my grandmother used to say. But uh, I, I go in, I find an area where land is selling. You know, I want to see land selling. That's really the main thing. Once I figure that out, I go in and dissect that community, that neighborhood, and I figure out what size parcels are selling and then how much per acre or how much per square foot. And then I kind of backwards plan that with how much I want to make per land deal. I, I, I recommend like 10 grand, you know, because there's many of these where I bought for a thousand and sold them for 5,000. I bought for 200 and sold it for 6,000. It's easier just to make 10 grand all day, you know? Um, so I have a marketing program that will send letters say, Nicole, let's just say you own a piece of land in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, and you're in a community that's selling and the land's selling for $50,000 a parcel. I'm going to go in and offer you say, you know, $32,000 and you sign the paper and you email it back to me. And I look at it, I decide if I wanted to do, do the deal. And then I start looking for buyers. Who's bought in the past? What realtors are selling that land? I post it on Craigslist and Facebook. Sometimes I, I, I love to pre-sell the land before I actually buy it. And a lot of these parcels, I don't even have to buy sometimes. I've got them sold and I can just do what's called an assignment of contract and wholesale it. Now, that's not my preferred method of selling the land. I will do it. But my preferred method is I like to buy it for 30 and sell it for 50 on seller financing because that's where I can sell or finance it. I can receive payments for many, many years, collect interest on that. Basically, I'm becoming the bank. I'm just being the bank. That's it. I'm buying an asset at a discount, aka the land, and then I'm selling it for where someone else can make payments on it and afford a monthly payment. And I, I benefit from being able to be that middleman. Okay, this is very interesting. Um... Definitely like a, a very mind opening avenue in terms of real estate. You know, I, I'm sure you know, everyone in real estate talks about buying and selling and it's usually homes, small family homes. Uh, my partner and I were actually talking about commercial real estate the other day, but this is really interesting because there's actually nothing even on the land. And like you mentioned, you know, I, I grew up seeing my parents and maybe you as well where they would have a few homes that they would rent out and then the AC is broken and you have to get the roof fixed every 10 or 20 years. And I always looked at that and was like, what a hassle. Like, I know there is money to be made in that. And of course, the, the, the land and the house is always appreciating. But like, what a money suck. And for me, when it came to investing, I always went the route of stocks, index funds, bonds, because that just made more sense to me. Instead of having to buy a new AEC unit when it breaks or having to you know, fix the furnace. So this is a really interesting concept. Now, so it's, it sounds like essentially you don't want, if at all possible, to hold on to the land for too long. Like you're not going to hold it and then wait for it to appreciate in 10, 20, 30 years. That's Who has not time for that? I don't know if I've, I'm, I don't know if I'm guaranteed another, you know, day or two, let alone 30 years. I want to make money today. I want to be profitable today and forever. Um, so yeah, like I want to pre-sell that land. I want to make like, so for instance, I just got a land deal I'm buying it for $275,000. Like, like, but I probably lost half the audience. Probably, I don't have 275. Well, let me tell you. I don't need 275. I'm getting that land at zero dollars down. I'm literally buying it directly from the seller, zero dollars down. Three percent interest is what they're going to make over per annum, three percent per annum. And I'm going to turn around and sell it to someone for fifteen thousand dollars down, and they're going to pay me twelve percent interest per annum. And I'm selling it for just a little bit more than what I'm buying. I'm pretty much buying it at market value. Um, I'm getting it just below market value and I'm going to sell it for right at market value and offer easy financing for someone, you know, and they can own that dream piece of land that they want to build their house on their cabin or develop or something like that. And, and these deals, like these home runs come around like every couple months and we just got to be looking for them. And, and, and for the person that's thinking, Oh man, I don't have money to do this. I don't have the time to do this. Well, neither did I in 2016 when I was a brand new second lieutenant in the military, just moved across the country with my family, just had our first baby. My first land deal I bought was $285 and I pre-sold it to a realtor for 5,000. 
and I paid the seller the day before I got paid by the realtor because it was like, I didn't have, like, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I didn't have $285 to leave into a piece of land and American land at that in Colorado Springs. Nuts, right? Um, Colorado Springs, Colorado, one of the most the fastest appreciating markets we just saw in the last few years. I was afraid to leave $285 in a piece of land, but you know, you don't need the money. Like you can, you can literally get this land under contract and assign your contract. You could sell it to someone. A bank, a bank offered me, uh, it was 44 acres for 25,000 and I was freaking out. I didn't have the 25 grand, but I signed the contract and I went out that Saturday morning, that next day, and I put signs everywhere. 33 signs that said 44 acres must sell 38 K. I had a buyer that evening. I made $14,000 cash. Didn't put a penny of my money in that, that land deal. And I was freaking out. I was like, the bank's going to literally sue me if I don't buy this land. But I had 30 days to find a buyer. Okay. Interesting. So let's talk about that. Um, I have a few questions that are maybe country specific, but in terms of actually finding a buyer, what does that look like for you now? Is that yeah. still just really putting a sign out there? Or is that your network? No. What does that look like? No, that's that's hard work. Now, will I still do it? There's some land that will take a little longer to sell. And we will have our our sign guys go out and put signs out. And I don't do it anymore. We find people on uh, Facebook uh, groups, Facebook buy, sell groups and Craigslist. They'll go out there and we pay them a couple dollars a sign. They love it. You know, they're usually Uber drivers or pizza delivery guys. And they'll just go put the signs out. And we use to sell it with a few signs. Um, but now the process looks, now that I'm doing more expensive land, I'm not doing, I'm not doing $285 parcels of land anymore because it's, it's just as easy to do $275,000 parcels of land. So I'll get it under contract. And then we will find the realtors in the area that are selling most of the land. Sometimes they have buyers and they'll list it for us on the MLS or we'll buy it and they'll list it for us on the MLS. And we always list it at the 30-day blowout price. We don't list it high and hope for a buyer. We list it where it's going to sell. You know, if everyone else is asking 275 in the area, I want to be at 260 and I'm offering seller financing. Like it's a no brainer. They're going to choose my land. Honey, this one has granite. This one has a pool. No, this is, this is land and this is land and this guy's way cheaper and we can finance it. Let's do that one. So that's kind of what the process looks like now. We, we, a lot of times sell to a neighbor. Like the neighbors always want more land. It's nuts. So if I'm in Costa Rica and I'm looking at land deals, all I need is someone with boots on ground. Usually my land sales specialist realtor that knows the area already, he's already selling land in it. You know, we sell land. My dad, my dad's done over 50 something parcels of land. He sells all of his on Facebook buy, sell groups and marketplace. It's crazy. Are you interested in becoming a global citizen and living a lifestyle by design in a country that aligns with you? If this is a lifestyle that you're seeking to create, we can help. Whether it be multiple residencies, citizenships, bank accounts, trusts, or company formations, we operate in 30 plus of the most tax-friendly jurisdictions around the globe to get you structured properly. Head to the link in the show notes to learn more and to get your global citizen journey underway today. Really? <laughs> that is very interesting. Yeah. Huh. Just purely from Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, that's his that's his main thing. And he's he works in one specific area. Um, and most of his buyers come from Miami, Florida. Hmm. He needs to learn Spanish, but uh, you know, he's set in his ways. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I'm curious in you sharing all of that, has there ever been a time when you, and maybe not based on what you just said, but I, I do want to know if there has ever been a time when you couldn't sell that land? There has been no parcel that I've ever not been able to sell. Now, some have taken longer. Yeah, I actually just sold a piece that was sitting on my website for a while. We listed it for a while. Uh, we bought it sight unseen. Turns out there was no road going to it. You had to like literally have a, a, a grader throw up the road. And funny, um, one of my past buyers um, that had actually stopped paying us for a piece of land, he kind of said, listen, we got to cancel the contract. My contract ended with the trucking company I was working for. So we canceled the contract. And I think I gave that guy $400 back because I was like, listen, uh, you paid a lot towards this land. I think he had paid like 4,500 towards the land. So I gave him like 400 bucks, just like, hey man, let's just do the paperwork, send it, give it back to me. Um, I resold it and made profit again on that land. Well, this guy reached out. He said, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I was just wondering if you had any more Colorado land. I was like, 
yeah, here's my site. Here's what I have available. Uh, here's a 10 acre parcel. There's no road going to it. You would need a road. Um, we can sell it to you for this much. I gave them a little discount. We sold it for $51,000 and I bought it for 16000 <laughs> And what is your site? You're mentioning your site. I'm sure listeners uh, are probably wanting you know, to go check it out. I hate to even mention it because it's not even updated. We don't put them on there anymore, but I've got some some smaller parcels left, some cheaper parcels left. It's uh, vacantlandofthefree.com, vacantlandofthefree.com. So if you want to know my like most updated, updated deals, like reach out um, and I can let you know. But uh, yeah, that site, we stopped updating it because we stopped selling the land ourselves. We now pay realtors to do it because here's the really cool thing about real estate agents. If they don't sell your land, they don't get paid. Before I had someone on staff, I had multiple people on staff that were selling the land and posting the land and a couple virtual assistants in the Philippines, you know, marketing the land. I was paying thousands of dollars for all these sites. Now it's easier just to pay a real estate agent 6% interest or 6% commission. Okay. So let's talk about other countries and considerations for those. You mentioned you were looking into Costa Rica. Now, what are some considerations that when you are looking into other countries or as maybe you will increasingly start to look into other countries potentially in the future that you have to look out for and be cautious of? Versus maybe in the U.S. it would just be a granted or a given. You know, I think a good example is a road not being built to that land. Or you know, in rainy season in a lot of countries in South America, you may not be able to access that land, or it may be very difficult and expensive to build a long driveway so that in rainy season you can actually just access the land. Yeah, I've never bought land in any other country besides the United States, so I couldn't even couldn't even help at all with that. Now, I can tell you all the ways that you should buy land in the United States. You know, I buy it through a title insurance company. I get a title insurance policy. I have a land sales specialist realtor that's selling land in that area. Go look and be my boots on ground and make sure there's not like 55 gallon drums of hazardous waste material or something like that, which that's uh never happened. <laughs> but I'm just like t talking about, it. yeah, is there road access? Is there electric close by? Is there water? How do you get the water? Is it city water? Is it well water? Like little things like that. Like there's not much moving parts with land, but really it's all about like, okay, what are the attributes? Like what's the views look like? You know, is it mountains? You know, in places like the mountains, you know, how's the road look like getting there? And what do the views look like? A mountain view property could be worth a million bucks with a million dollar view, but you could be in the valley and not see anything or in the woods. So those do affect, and that's why the the, the boots on ground really helps. And we, we always say like, we want the 30 day blowout price. Like we want the get her done now price. I don't want this. If, if this is sitting on the MLS for 180 days, you're fired. Okay. Good to know. Um, so I, I think probably what a lot of listeners are thinking is when I'm thinking of the American market, the Canadian market as well, um, it's expensive. And I'm talking, of course, to buy a home, you know, you're looking at close to a million, I think in any residential, nice middle upper class area. So I think when we're talking about land, people are probably thinking of huge numbers. It's a million for a house. Of course, there's not a house on this land, but is it still realistic to get a maybe not a $300 piece of land anymore? But what is a, a realistic price where if somebody doesn't have a million to start out? Yeah, I, again, every area is different. Real estate is very micro. I mean, there's some, I've got uh, some land on my website that I'm selling for like $8,900 or $10,000 that I bought for like $1,000. Um, so, you know, those, those, you can, you can buy it for around that area, certain parts of Colorado. Uh, Florida is getting a little bit more expensive because as the demand comes in, the prices go up. And a lot of like I was the guy I took surf lessons with in uh, Costa Rica, I surfed for five days straight. Um, he asked me, he's like, what's your best advice for buying land? I said, buy some today. He's like, what? I was like, buy some land today because it's going to be expensive to you now. But when you retire 30 years from now or how whenever you retire, it's still going to be expensive. So like if you talk to any old timer, they, they, you know, the number one thing in the nursing home was I should have bought land, you know, because <laughs> God's not making any more of it. And going back, I, I want to just go back to one part. You know, we have a lot of Canadians that come into our land sharks community and they, they open up an American LLC and they buy land through it. We've got some guys in the Czech Republic. 
uh, Belgium, uh, Pakistan, and they like we've got a, a Christian missionary um, out there. But basically, they open up a, a limited liability company, an LLC, through Prime Corporate Services, and buy U.S. land because it's just there's there's tons of opportunity. It's protected. You're protected. Um, and and I'll I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you go back to the, asking the questions. <laughs> No, that's great information. Thank you. Because, you know, as I mentioned, it's it's a very global lifestyle and global audience that a lot of the listeners are living. So on the topic of being a foreigner, being a non-American citizen, residents, what, how does that look? So let's say somebody from Pakistan, great example, wants to, they can open the LLC, pretty straightforward, but how does it look to actually start assessing where to buy this land, the actual yeah. process of buying the land. Do they have to be on the ground? What does that look like? Yeah, the easiest place they can go to is like redfin.com and they can look at the sold activity w- where stuff is selling. You know, you could pick a state, like a random state, like uh, Orlando, Florida, you know, start there, Disney World. And let's look at, uh, go to the sold tab and let's look at the last three months and let's click on land and you just start hovering over the map area, kind of looking for the heat spots. Like where are the dots where everything's selling? And then you could just zoom in because again, real estate's micro like Florida. We've got canals uh, on one side of the canal. The land might sell for, you know, $5,000 an acre on the other side of the canal it might sell for 50,000 an acre. So you want to be micro in that area and just kind of know those areas. But yeah, really it starts with Redfin. It's a free, free us uh, you know site that you can go on and see a lot of data do you believe you're going to have a very biased opinion on this but i, I do <laughs> want to hear what your answer is going to be do you believe that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth for yourself me personally yes um because that's you know i look at you know most of these millionaires and billionaires and they've all i would say nine out of ten of them have had some sort of real estate experience. And for me, you know, I, my son today was talking about grandma and grandpa's house, um, how it's, it's, it's smaller. And they, like, he sees what grandma, grandpa's watching on TV. And, um, and I was thinking to myself, small house, like they live in like a 2000 square foot house. I mean, I grew up in 900 or uh, yeah, 900 square foot house. And I didn't like, we didn't start from like, we didn't have really much. My parents did a great job raising me and my sister, but the real estate, it, it was created from nothing, you know, and it was like, I was thinking to myself, you should have seen what the, like my son's talking about grandma and grandpa's house now is small. I was like, you should have seen what I grew up in, son. But I didn't say that because kids don't care. Um, but like, that's my biased opinion is because when I started buying those land deals for $285 and flipping them for 5000 and then I would buy them for 1000 and then sell them for 15000 and get and get interest. Like I collected $49,000 in interest last year. That's just interest. That's being the bank. And you take that interest and you put it into more real estate. It's just like, it's like a snowball. Like you start with a little tiny, like I hurt my back one time. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say this. I was a military guy and I hurt my back building a snowman because I didn't understand. I'm from Florida. I didn't understand how heavy. I never understood that snowball effect until I started building snowmans. I tried to pick one of these things up and I was like, oh, <laughs> so the snow grabs more snow. And that's with real estate. Now I take my land profits and I buy industrial and commercial buildings. I heard you mention commercial. like. I'm looking for stuff I don't have to really manage. And we'd have triple net leases on these where if something breaks, the tenant doesn't even call. Like they better not call. Uh, they, we only, I only have to pay the mortgage. The tenant pays the taxes. They pay the insurance. They pay all the repairs. They pay the sales tax. It's beautiful. But land is where I make the money to buy those assets. So it's just, it's snowballing. I can't even imagine where, where things are going to be at when I'm 65 years old. Brent, you sound exactly like my partner. We were literally having this conversation. That's why I brought commercial into this uh, the other day because he he is an ex restaurant owner. When we lived in China, he had a few restaurant chains, and so he really saw the benefits of commercial real estate. And he was like, "You don't have to fix anything. Like they're the business. They need it done. They fix it." And 
I, I think not enough people are talking about commercial. We just all hear, you know, homes and houses, but definitely not enough people are talking about land. At this point in the conversation, please plug your website and where people can find you because I think they're probably going to want to start Googling now. Um, but I do have some more questions for you. About yeah, that. thank you so much. Yeah, Nicole, it just, they just go to the land, the land sharks.com the land sharks.com schedule that call with me fill that application i will actually call you um sometimes it takes me a couple days so please be patient with me um but yeah if you're serious about figuring out like how to get rich in land or maybe how to have geography freedom like nicole like that's so impressive like like this is the new rich i'm sure you've read um you know what is it called the four hour work week the new rich like like, why are more people not talking about that? Like, we could go anywhere. COVID changed the world. We could all work from a computer now. It's nuts. Could not agree more. Okay, so I want to talk really briefly on the business aspect of your business, the business side of things. So what did growing and scaling that actually look like? You mentioned that you had a pretty large team, and then it sounds like you downsized from there, realizing that a large team was not where it's at. So share with us a little bit about the behind the scenes of actually building the business side. Yeah. And if I can save anybody the heartache and the pain, you know, you don't need a big team. That was like a vanity metric for me. I was following these guys and paying for, um, you know, all this coaching and mentor and trying to be like these guys. Uh, so I was like, oh, scale, scale, scale. But I was, we had scaled to where we're doing nine land deals a week. And I was just like, and when we had a little, that little blip in the market, where the interest rates went up and I was flipping seven houses, renovating seven houses. And I was building two new houses on land we had bought and doing the buying and selling of the land. Um, had all these like roughly 15 people. And like, we had that little blip and I was like, why am I doing all this? Um, I ended up taking a second mortgage out on one of my really good investment properties. Um, we had 50, we still have it, uh, 58 acres, 4,000 square foot home on a ranch. And we had rented it out. We lived there for a while, um, before we moved back to Florida. And I was like, I'm literally taking a mortgage out on a great rental property that was cash flow and amazing just to keep paying these team members that are kind of some of them were dead weight. Um, so I kind of went through a, let's cut all expenses. We rented out our office. Um, we laid off a bunch of people. Um, now I just have a, an executive assistant, an accountant, and a part-time acquisition manager. So life is so much less complicated, just cleaning up the the, the, the clutter. Um, it's just, and we're way more profitable. Yeah, I've heard quite a few businesses who are pretty big and downsizing just made them so much more profitable in the end. So we've talked a lot about real estate. Um, I love that we've touched on real estate for non-Americans as well and the business side of things. To wrap up, is there anything that you want to touch on here that you feel like is of importance in this conversation that we haven't touched on? You know, I would just say that there's so much education out there. What you offer with your podcast, Nicole, you know, stop listening, stop gathering, stop educating yourself and just start doing Take action on on the the advice that 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 Nicole gives. Um, there, there's just so much gold out there. You know, we have these beautiful libraries that no one goes and visits, but all the answers are right there from the people that came ahead of us. Like I'm no one special. Like I've got my problems too. You know, I fight with my wife sometimes. Uh, most of the time, it's her fault, not mine. But not just kidding. Um, but like. I'm just a little further ahead, like with quitting my job or traveling or building a business. Like we're just, there's always someone that's just a little further ahead than you that you can hear their story and take action. Like that's it. Like stop, stop sitting around, you know, going from podcast to podcast, to YouTube to YouTube, get out of that, that hamster wheel and just take action and uh, move forward. If it wasn't for that podcast though, of that guy talking about lands, like I didn't believe him. I didn't believe what he was saying. I was like, this is crazy. I'm going to put this to the test. Sure enough, I made some money quick and, and I actually made almost $200,000. Then I hired that guy to one-on-one -on -one coach me because I was like, there's more. I, if I got that much from a podcast. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. So again, plug your plug where people can find you, your socials, and then also your podcast as well. Yeah, thelandsharks.com. Um, I'm on uh, most social media platforms. I've got a really, oh, I forgot to mention Caitlin. She's my marketing girl, but she's part time as well. Um, uh, Brent L. Bowers, you can find me on most of the socials. Brent, and the L does stand for land. Yes, Brent L. Bowers. Um, and then 
think I was supposed to plug something else. I don't know. But I, I think that's enough. Um, yeah, no, I think that's good. We'll have all the links below. So definitely check out Brent, your podcast, your socials, your website. Thank you for sharing all oh, this information. Yeah. The podcast, Wholesaling podcast. Inc. It's Wholesaling Inc. Uh, every Friday I have a case study that comes out. I'm one of the the, the three, get, or, I'm sorry, three hosts on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. But yeah, every Friday we have a, a case study from one of our Land Sharks community members just sharing how they did their first deal, how much they made, how much they how they found it, how they sold it. So that's a way a lot of people are getting started by just listening to those episodes. I love that. And I love that you actually share that information of, of real case studies too. So it's practical. You know, it's like you, you <laughs> listen to a podcast, I can do it. Okay, well, now I have the funds. So now let me hire you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a really, yeah it that's so sense. true. Yeah, that's, that's, I'll tell you, we get a lot of sharks that will do their first deal and they'll make like, we had one guy do like, $37,000 and then came into the program. Um, and it's just, it's awesome. It's good seeing that. You've just listened to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. If anything from this episode resonated with you, I would appreciate if you share this podcast on your socials. And of course, be sure to tag me. And don't forget to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you for joining me on this global citizen journey. And I'll see you in the next episode.